assistant professor from Achievers College, and it's my absolute pleasure to extend a hearty welcome to each one of you present here at day three of the five days online national level faculty development program on the topic Empowering Educators' Mind, organized by Maharashtra Commerce Teachers Association in collaboration of Achievers College of Commerce and Management. Firstly, I would like to acknowledge the presence of dignitaries, our respected patrons, a president of MCA, Dr. B.B. Taiwade sir, an executive president of MCA, Dr. T.A. Shivre sir, advisory committee member, FDP chairperson, Dr. Valmik Sarwade sir, convener, principal, Dr. Jeeva Shitole sir, deputy convener, senior professor, Dr. A.M. Gurav sir, co-convener, Dr. Arvind Chaudhary sir, FDP Director and the Principal of the Achievers College, Honorable Dr. C. A. Mahesh Bhivadikas. Both the Secretaries of FDP, Dr. Nishikan Jha and Dr. Kuldeep Sharma, sir. Vice Principal of Department of Management Studies, Ms. Sophia de Souza, and Vice Principal of Department of Commerce, Ms. Sanak. Today's esteemed resource person, Dr. Shiv Prasad Shete, sir, and Dr. Ramchandra Nilpan sir, and my dear participants. It is indeed a golden opportunity for each one of us to enrich and enlighten ourselves. Without further ado, let's dive into our promising schedule. Before proceeding to today's session, I would like to highlight a preview of day two. In the first session, which was delivered by Dr. Shraddha Bhume Madam, who put light on the topic of sustainability of teachers in NEP. And in the second session was about AI in commerce management education using modern teaching like aids like Swayam MOOCs effectively by Dr. A.M. Gurav sir. Now I'd like to request my dear colleague, Ms. Apeksha Pardisi, madam, to introduce our today's first resource person for the day, Dr. Shiv Over to you, madam. Thank you, madam. Good afternoon, all the members, presenters, and It's my privilege an honor to, to introduce our guests for today's first session on the topics and ethics and ethics management and our beloved honorable guest, Dr. Shri Prakas Madhuka Shetya. Sir is master's in his own field and a recognized PhD holder. Sir has a huge experience in educational field for more than 25 years. He aims to work in educational field with a desire to impart knowledge and to be a part of an environment which encourages continuous learning and opportunities to interact with intellectual. Apart from that, Sir has published many journals, reports, books, as well as attended many conferences, seminars, and workshops to empower their knowledge and education. Sir had also gained knowledge in computer and technological field by learning various software and programming concepts. Dr. Shetty Sir is energetic, quick learner, detail-oriented, and work-oriented individual. Sir had proven ability to motivate and inspire students through his guidance all over the year. Now, I would like to request Dr. Shivpata Shetty Sir to share his knowledge and expertise on the topics, ethics and ethics of commerce management. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, madam. I would like to express my gratitude for this esteemed opportunity to all the MCA authorities as well as uh, authorities of Achievers College. Uh, I hope I'm very much audible to everybody, each and every Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. I'm a, I may share my screen now. Yes, yes, so you can. The screen is visible. Okay. okay. I think my screen is visible now. Yes, sir, it is. Okay. Thank you, everybody. All the participants, I welcome all the participants 
in this very important topic, ethics, ethos for commerce and management. My dear friends, I may request you all to on your camera so that I can have a visuals of your smiling faces at once so that I can understand who else are participants. Please, all of you. Okay, thank you at once. Okay, very good. Thank you. So let us proceed with this today's very important topic related with the ethics and ethos, which is a current discussed topic in field of commerce and management. I may request you all the participants to have a small game-like interactive session. On your screen, I have written that write your names of two teachers in your life who have influenced you most they have inspired you, motivated you, and moved your heart. Just write their names, two teachers, since beginning from your prim primary education to your uh, higher education. And also write what was the cause that they motivated you, inspired you a lot. Why did you feel so much of motivated just because of their existence? You can put these two words into chat box, one after another, please. I request all the participants to use the chat box so that we can understand why did everybody get motivated just because of that particular faculty. Are you getting me? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, just just unmute yourself and please speak. Okay, Sandeep Rahul is saying that Professor Ayer sir motivate to do something. Okay, sir, no problem. He motivated you, but thing is that. What was his quality that he motivated you? Which was his quality? Did you fail and feel to be hard touch? Hello. Okay, good. Okay, good. Vijay sir, he always inspires me. Handekar Professor Pangu motivated me. Okay, fine. Some of the responses are there. I am also requesting all the participants to respond. Okay, very good. Now, let me understand what was the cause of the motivation. Why, why did you all feel that they motivated you? I want two characteristic words. For example, he was enthusiastic or for example, he was caring, something like that. Or his skills were magnificent to teach. Something like that I want. Can you be a little bit faster, please? Unique teaching. Okay, good. Teaching. Fine. Is there anything? Come on, friends. I need a little bit. 
Interface from your side, please. Consistency. Okay, good. Ms. Siddhi Chavan is writing consistency. This experiment we have done a lot of times in different places in such kind of seminars. Is there anybody who would like to participate in this? Okay, extra knowledge. Teaching skill, enthusiastic, honesty. Good, good. Thank you. Thank you for your kind response. Interactive learning. Honesty and enthusiastic. Okay. No problem. We'll proceed further. My dear friends, when we conduct this kind of experiment, many places, we received not many qualities in terms of skills as well as values. But segregated when we segregated these characters into knowledge, skills and values, the number of values was much more higher in comparison to skills and knowledge. Many of the participants, they said that their teachers were very much caring, loving, enthusiastic, just like right now some of the participants, they said that they were very honest and uh, enthusiastic one. So in this way, to inspire another person, the set of values plays a very important role. So. The values play a very important role. Against the values, there may be an unethical practices in the business that we are observing. Owners and the managers cheating workers as well as the customers, damaging environment, bribing government officials to pass contracts, wrong perceptions about the business. That is, business is a jungle. That means mightiest shall win. Dog eat dog philosophy. Market forces are everything. Profits is everything. Businesses have nothing to do with morals. Money is everything. Marketing is neutral between illicit and illicit. However, in reality, there cannot be a win-win solution without observing values in the business. That is what I want to emphasize here. That means in a personality, when we see some good values, we get really inspired. That's it what we saw in the earlier uh, interaction that we held and got the information about the motivated people due to their teachers. Likewise, in a business scenario also, if the people are following values in the businesses, then only there can be a win-win solution. There are examples such as very renowned, well-known brands, they're not following proper ethical practices such as Nike is the largest brand in, one of the largest brand in sportwear. They are using child labor. Adidas use pollutant chemical in synthetic microfiber as a need of the product, but environmentally very pollutant. Volkswagen, a German car maker, cheated by installing a false software to fool the emission testers. Coca-Cola is much more defend, defamed for being environmental unfriendly, violating human rights and racial discrimination. And in Indian case, Jet Airways, a case of financial mismanagement. My dear friends, the ethics and ethos are expressed through the behavior. When we even minute of the minute detail of the personality can express what kind of ethics and values we are right now expressing. Let me describe a small story of Chinu and Shinu. Chinu and Shinu, these were two milkmaid, namely Chinu and Shinu. They used to produce milk and milk preparation in the surroundings. Chinu had only two cows and was very poor. Shinu had 50 cows and was quite rich. One day Shinu borrowed 10 kg butter from Chinu. Even after one month, she didn't return it back. Therefore, Shinu went to Sorry, Chinu went to Shinu as asked her 
to return for the borrowings or pay for it, either or. Chinu reacted very harshly. Chinu started to make a false allegation on Chinu that she had borrowed 100 kg of butter from Shinu and now not returning nor paying for it. The Shinu started quarreling against Shinu. Over this, Shinu went to the king and put her false argument against Shinu. King told Pradhan to, took in, to look into the matter. Pradhan told both of the women, come next day morning for justice. Both women agreed to come in the next day morning to Pradhan's house. Meanwhile, Pradhan told his servant to dig a pathway to his house and pour plenty of water to make a pathway very muddy. He told the servant to keep both water, sorry, two water buckets for washing the feet at the doorsteps. Next day morning, both the ladies came. Both ladies walked through mud. Chinu walked through a muddy road with, with very calm and peaceful mind. She tried to save herself from mud as far as possible. After reaching the doorstep, servant gave her water to wash her feet. She washed her feet very clean and very within very less amount of water. On the other hand, Chinu came through the mud with a very outraged mindset due to the inconvenience caused to her. She was very much upset and angry, up expressing her agony in very harsh words. She reached the doorsteps and received a water bucket from the servant, washed her feet, poured all the water given to her, used remaining water from Shinu's bucket, but still her feet were not properly clean. <laughs> Pradhan was observing all this after women entering into the house, he says to Chinu that Chinu's behavior is ideal. In all considering this, it seems impossible that she has, she can cheat you. Now, will you please tell me the truth or otherwise I have other means to take it out? Chinu admitted her fault and confessed. Thus, we can see from this story, ethics and ethos are expressed through the behavior. Even simplest of the simple, eye contacts can make other person understand the ethics that one person is following in his, her or his life. To define ethics and ethos, ethics is a conception of right and wrong. Ethics help to determine whether our action are moral or immoral. It helps to provide a win-win solution. Ethical behavior is the behavior expected by the public. Managing ethics is the art and discipline of applying ethical principles to examine and solve complex management and business dilemmas. Managerial ethics are values and principles operate in managing the organization. They form a moral framework of the organization. Managerial ethics, the standard fundamental principles of behavior which provide guidelines to the manager to work with different stakeholders, such as it includes promoters, investors, employees, customers, competitors, shareholders, suppliers, dealers, government agencies, labor union, etc. The origin of ethics and ethos derived from Greek word ethos. It is concerned with human conduct and the behavior of individuals in society. Ethics means just a way of living. It is a branch of philosophy. On the other hand, ethos means application of principles or values help to develop the habits. The habits are also known as ethos. Ethos is nothing but a customs of traditions that a person or organization is following in the life. Ethical problems have one or more right answers, even may not have right answers. Dilemma between profit maximization and social welfare is in front of almost all the organizations. 
Whereas in our Indian context, we can say that Tata is known for its honesty, reliability, and trustworthiness. Management or business ethics operate as a system of values relating to managerial goals and techniques to meet human aims. Ultimately, values are the part of inner voice which prevents from unethical practices. Difference between ethics and values. This is very important part. Many times, ethics and values are interchangeably used as synonyms by a common ordinary people. But we as a teacher of management, we need to understand a fundamental difference between ethics and values. Values are personal in nature. On the other hand, ethics are generalized value system. For example, no discrimination in the recruitment. Values are basic or fundamental principles which are set as standards that govern the behavior of the person. Difference between ethics and values elaboratively explained in this slide. Individual attitude regarding values, it is individual's attitude or personal sense, but in case of ethics, it's an entire branch of philosophy, which explains systematic application of philosophy to determine right or wrong, applied principles in professional setup. It also includes different professional setup, which is, for example, medical ethics, armed forces ethics, international affairs, research, etc. In each and every discipline, we can observe different set of ethics which need to run the organization. Ethics help to conduct the activities as well as ethics compares the course of action. It is a brainstorming activity. A lot of thinking is required at the time of application than in real life. On the other hand, at left hand side, we will observe the values described. It is an individual attitude or a personal sense. Values are basic fundamental beliefs that guide or motivate the attitude. It is a consciousness of a person, personal thought of right or wrong. Values are static, influence emotional position. It is a quality of heart. Exactly this is the difference that it is a quality of heart. On the other hand, ethics something needs to be brainstorming activity. Values provide a basis for ethical considerations. But not necessarily ethics may or may not include. Ethics are not limited only to the values. Business ethics are different than that of, that of a religion, law, culture, feelings, etc. For example, personal feeling cannot be considered to be business decisions. Personal feelings may be different, although they may be good or bad, but Business decision based on business ethics are completely different than that of feeling of a person. Such wise, values, employee may or may not be loyal to an employer, co-worker and customers and investor at a point of time. But ethics, they are completely different than that of a values in such circumstances. Different theories of, it, of the ethics have been presented by many stalwarts. It includes meta-ethics, which considers what is good, what is important for the judgment. It says that personal feelings are less important. Normative ethics describes, just like other normative sciences, what it should be. Describe what is right or wrong. It states that what manager is ought to do. Regarding applied ethics, describe what a manager should do in given situation. On the other hand, utilitarian ethics, the theory advocates that a practical course of action which costs and benefit, which can be measured and cost can be compared against the benefits and wherever there are costs or losses are incurred, a producer or the business person has to compensate them, them with better benefits. For example, if a company is using pollutant ingredients, environmentally disastrous ingredients into its production line, in that condition, they have to expand differently so that they can enhance the ability of the environment, such as tree plantation, uh, restoring the water, as well as many other things, such as so that they can 
benefit to the environmental factors. Examples of ethics such as honesty, loyalty, integrity, caring, respectful, lawful, accountability, etc. In this way, on the other hand, they can be considered as the values where, but when values are involved into the business decisions or the commerce and management decisions, they are known as business ethics. Importance in the management helps to maintain the trust and credibility, help for legal and administrative compliance, reduction in environmental pollution, enhance company's reputation and brand image, good working environment, harmonizes relationship between stakeholders, satisfied stakeholder including customers, long run success, reduced government interventions, helpful to promote social responsibility. Manager's duty towards ethical standards. Establish lawful code of conduct, providing training in ethics, providing counseling to deal with dilemma, setting an example and leading by ex example. Management tips for handling ethical dilemma. Steps involved in handling ethical dilemmas. Recognizing a problem and ethical dilemma in the situation. That means as a manager, one has to recognize what the problem exactly is and what are the ethical considerations are involved into such situations. Collect the facts about all relevant, uh, from all the relevant stakeholders. Understanding the impact of ethical problems on the stakeholders. Identify different alternatives and options. Identify the consequences of different options on given situation. Consider legal consequences, bringing consensus among relevant stakeholders to opt for a specific option. Next one, taking final decision to follow up. And the last one is measuring the impact and follow up. The manager has to go all these nine stages to solve the ethical dilemma so that the dilemma can be considered very neatly to come up with a proper conclusive decision. Unethical practices at workplace, manager lying to employees, nepotism, sorry, manager lying to employees, nepotism and favoritism, taking credit for others' achievement, using company's property and equipment for personal use, not to protect the whistle blower, maintain false accounting and other records, terminate employee without notice. These are all unethical practices at workplace by the manager. Ethics in human resource, basic manager has to follow basic human rights such as job security, freedom of thought, religion, op religious opinion and its expression, right to education. They have to provide safety at workplace to the human resource, equal opportunity for career growth, respect, fairness and honesty in workplace, improving recruitment, proper salary wage and reward system, give opportunity for two-way communication, no discrimination based on caste, color, culture, religion and appearance, etc. Creating splits in labor union, biased attitude in selection, use of child labor, sexual harassment at workplace, breaking of promises, violence at workplace, unhuman working hours, creating forceful, stressful situations, false claim and growth and career growth. These are some unscrupulous or unethical practices of the human uh, within the human resource management. Unethical practices in marketing, these are the some lively examples such as product in case of, we can we can considering unethical practices in marketing in terms of uh, four P's of marketing, that is product, price, promotion, and place. Product, unsafe product, unreliable product. Use of hazardous chemicals in production. Product design is wrong. Breach of guarantee and warranty. No adequate provision for after sale service. In case of pricing, exorbitant prices are charged unethically. The business persons can get involved into bid dragging predatory pricing, monopolistic pricing, market scheming, in case of place, coercion to make more product, to buy as well as to provide more space in stores, 
creating false storage, uh, false shortage, fake delivery. In case of promotion, deceptive advertisement, deceptive presentation from salespersons, over and exaggerated promises from the production units as well as marketing team are some of the practices in uh, which are wrong practices in marketing. Unethical practices in accounting, <coughs> misleading accounts, misleading and false financial accounting reporting, tax evasion, conflicts of interest, pressure to meet financial targets, confidentiality breaches, embezzlement of cash, overstating performance and valuation, participating fraudulent activity, non-compliance with laws and regulations, lack of transparency, failure to disclose relevant information, and not following accounting standard. Rather, that is worst case in case of practicing accounts. Let us go through a case study. I'll give you this case study. You are a vice principal of a degree college in middle class town. The principal has recently retired and management is looking for his replacement. There are also chances that management may promote you as principal's post. This is what it is a typical case. Usually as a teacher, many of us have been gone through or going through. In the meantime, during the annual examination, the flying squad came for came from the university, caught two students red-handed involving in unfair means. The senior lecturer of the college was presently helping those students in this act. This senior lecturer also happens to be close to the management. One of the students was the son of local politician who was responsible for getting the college affiliated present reputed university. The second student was son of local businessman who has donated maximum funds to run the college. You as a principal in charge immediately inform the management regarding this unfortunate incident. The management told you to resolve the issue with the flying squad at any cost. They further said such incident will not only hamper the reputation of the college, but politician and businessmen both are important personalities for functioning of the college. You are also given a hint that further promotion to post of the principal depends on your capacity in resolving this issue with the flying squad. In meanwhile, you are intimated by your administrative officer that certain members of student union are protecting outside the college gate against the senior lecturer and the students involved in the incident demanding strict action against the defaulter. Now, discuss this ethical issue involved in the case and critically examine the options available to you as vice principal. The options available not to take any action against the defaulter, keep it quiet and none of the action will be taken, to take strict disciplinary action against the defaulter, to speak with the flying score and establishing internal inquiry committee on senior lecture and the students, to resign from the post of vice principal. What would be a better answer for this case? Here, in this case, one has to understand what are the stakeholders involved? Then, following this, what kind of unethical practices are going on because of which the values as well as ethical considerations are violated? Next, if any of the action occurs, then what will be the pros and cons because of any of the action taken or the option made available or if it is implemented? For example, not to take any action against the defaulter, in that case, the college reputation will be at peril as well as those students who are uh, providing 
unrest outside of the college, they will be more surrounding the college with this more char strike and all these things. Apart from that, a person may be person in charge as a principal, vice principal. He may be promoted to the level of principal, but he will be of no action man. And likewise, he will be taken as granted by all the colleagues of his own. In second option, to take strict disciplinary action against the defaulter. In this case, management go against the vice principal and the management may not consider that vice principal to promote at the level of principal. However, the college reputation would be saved. And the third one, speak with Flying Scott and establishing internal college inquiry committee on senior lecturer and students will be just like a mediocre level of option because inquiry committee may or may not have a disciplinary action against And the last one is to flee from the problem to resign from the post of vice principal. That is the simplest way, but the problem will remain unresolved. My dear fellow friends, such kind of dynamic, uh, dilemma occurs every day lifetime of a business person. A business person need to learn the principles behind the ethics so that they can connote a proper meaning and understanding from a given situation. The Indian companies like Infosys, Tata Steel, Asian Paints, Bajaj Atto, and Wipro, they excel on the basis of subordinate goals, a set of values and aspirations and corporate culture. They are exemplary people and many of the business persons, they get good ideas from these highly startward business organizations. It is said in Bhagavad Gita, Yadyat acharati shreshtat tattat ete tattat devetaro janaha sa yad pramanam kurute lokas tad anuvartante. The translation of this verse, this is from 3rd chapter and 25th, 21st verse from Bhagavad Gita. It says that whatever action a great man performs, common men fellow. And whatever standards he sets by exemplary acts, all the world pursues. Therefore, there is a need of value-based value-based education to develop champions of character. If we could, as a teacher, develop a managers, those who are following good ethics, then only business organization can follow good ethics in their management practices. Plants are shaped by cultivation, humans by education. Now onwards, as this faculty development program is, made, uh, is meant to energize the faculty members as well as provide them impetus to cultivate good habits, I'm a little bit contributing these experiences about teaching of the values. Plants are shaped by cultivation and human by education. Thus, education plays a very important role in case of development of the values. Lot many colleges produce good human resource comprising of doctors, engineers, accountants, administrators, etc. However, degradation of consciousness is a major issue of concern nowadays. Values play major role in personality of the person. Values are the basic and fundamental principles which are state as a standard. They govern the behavior of the person. According to Mahatma Gandhi, wealth is lost, nothing is lost. Health is lost, something is lost. If character is lost, everything is lost. Best of all things is character. Einstein believed in humility. Likewise, Master Blaster Sachin Tendulkar also believed in humility. A story can be narrated. At once, Einstein was walking on a pathway in the university campus confronted a newly recruited young professor. 
who greeted him saying nice to meet you sir nice to meet you sir i am mr so and so professor in physics albert einstein replied promptly well nice to meet you sir i am albert einstein a student of physics the young man remains stunned and speechless goal of education is not only provide information but transformation of an individual what is real education in indian context ethos and ethics have been elaborately given by chanakya one of the test is matruvat paradarshu paradarshu loshtravat atmavat sarva bhuteshu that means one who considers another wife as his mother another possession as a lump of dirt and treats all other living beings as he would himself is considered to be learned result of current education system in current education system we see a very small child innocent one holding water bag in the hand lollipop in the mouth catching hands of parents goes to school after 20 25 years later what output comes out of the college a youth holding different bottles in hand fire sticks is in mouth catching hands of new girl as a friend or a boy friend every year information was passed for 20 years however may or may not have transformed the heart of the person in many cases output may be more worse than input क्या है पंक्ति मिस अंस ओके थैंक यू द एक्सपेक्टेड आउटपुट इज दैट विद्या विनय न शोभते मींस एजुकेटेड वन इज सपोज्ड टू बी हंबल एंड नॉट अरोगेंट अमानी न मान देना दिस इज अनदर संस्कृत सेइंग दैट कनोट्स द रिस्पेक्टफुल टुवर्ड्स ऑल लिविंग बीइंग पेरेंट्स टीचर्स फ्रेंड्स एंड एनिमल्स थ्री लोडेड विद फ्रूट्स बोस डाउन is that end of the road that all the scenario is completely negative and there are no chances for improvement is not like that my dear friends it is up to us the teachers that we can teach values which ultimately get transformed into business ethics or management or commerce ethics <coughs> present system itself can play a major role values of god more than they are taught for example in 2020 11 anna hazare become a very sensational youth icon not because of his beauty power degrees or many high birth but just because of part of truth ultimately role of a parent and teacher that makes a very big difference in this way we need to redefine our values so that we can teach and inculcate students to all the necessary things earlier gurukul system was there to teach the wisdom but now the our existing colleges can create different wisdom centers to teach the values network of wisdom centers will help to spread these values as well as ethics in common masses technology can help a lot in western countries jesus christ revered son of god helped to provide values in 1960s in usa which was completely anti social movement was going on from hippies a one wise man from india named as bhakti vedanta swami prabhupad established this con and thousands of people motivated and started following good values in conclusion of this only education of information is not sufficient but complete individual can be developed with the help of knowledge skills and values we need to create wisdom centers 
after all. And this is what it is, a important mind map which depicts all the duties of the teacher which can be used for develop a proper action plan where a teacher can teach his university regular syllabus along with value-based syllabus so that a proper human resource can be developed. The syllabus can be segregated into knowledge, skills and values. I'm thanking you all to all the participants and here I'm going to take a leave of you. I would like to open up for the question answer sessions from uh, in this presentation. Is there any questions? Please feel free to ask. Is there any question from the participant side? Uh, I think uh, there are no questions from the participant end. Okay. Yes, participants, if you have any queries, you can put in the chat box or you can unmute yourself. Is there anybody? Uh, sir, I think there are no questions uh, for the, any participants end. So let's mm -hmm. move further. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I, Assistant Professor Sarah Bano Sheikh, would like to conclude this first session of Day three of five days national level FDP by the thanking all the patrons and the advisory committee members. I would like to thank our today's resource person, Dr. Shiv Prasad Shetty sir, for taking the time to speak at this FDP. Your insight and the perspective were truly valuable, sir. And uh, we were all truly engaged by your presentation on ethics and ethos for commerce and management. I would like to pleasure to have you with you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Over to you, Siddhima. Thank you, madam. Thank you once again. Sir, thank you very much. It was a wonderful session and you have covered each and everybody's ethics and ethos. Thank you very much. Including thank you, sir. Thank you once again to you best. all. Thank you, sir. Great, sir. Great. Thank you very much. Over to organizers, please. Uh, thank you, sir. Good evening, uh, everyone. Welcome to the second session of the day, which is about the work-life balance. As we know, in today's scenario, there is a huge need to maintain a harmonious relationship between the personal life and the professional life. So we have with us Dr. Ramchandra Nilpankan, sir. And for his introduction, I request my colleague, Mr. Vishal Singh, to please take charge and introduce our guest. Over to you, Vishal, sir. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Siddhi, Madam Vishal, sir, is not there now. Uh, 
no actually ma'am i'm trying to reach uh, him let me check ma'am excuse me Actually, uh, there was some uh, network issue on, on his joining. Hello. Hello. My say Dr. Nirpankar, may I audible? Yes, sir, you are. So just give me okay. two minutes. Okay, 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 Hanji. Take your own time. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Good afternoon, Good evening. everyone present here. I am Mr. Vishal Singh. It is my privilege to introduce our today's resource person, Dr. Ramchandra Nirakar Singh. Who is the academic directors of Shivraj College, Kolapur? Sir is a founder director of Shri Ravanlath Housing Society, Azara Minty State. He is a founder, he is a member of Board of Studies in Commerce and Merchantile and Industrial Law in the Faculty of Commerce and Merchantile and Industrial Law. He is a coordinator of NAC department and he is having 36 years of teaching experience at UG level and 20 years experience of PG level. He has worked as a member of Planning Board of College for a 10th plan and he is a chairman of LIC committee at Shivaji College, Kolapur. He has also worked as a polling officer at the time of MLA election in the year 2009. He has published many research papers in Indian and international journal. He has participated in nine workshops related to the restructuring of syllabus. Sir, we are very fortunate to have you here with us and we are eagerly waiting to listen to your expertise on work-life balance. Now, I request you to proceed. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, all of you. I'm very happy to join this national level faculty development program on empowering education Educator's mind. Am I audible? Sir, your Am voice I... is very slow. Okay. Uh, my screen is audible. Visible. My screen is screen is visible, madam. Yes, sir. The screen is visible. Just your volume is a bit low, sir. Okay. Good afternoon, all of you. I'm very happy to join this national level faculty development program, which is very useful for new faculty which empowering educators mind teaching is a noble profession heartily congratulations or congratulations to all of you thanks to maharashtra 
Commerce Teachers Association and uh, organizing Achievers College Kalyan Mumbai, giving giving me an opportunity to present myself thoughts regarding. Work-life balance, is it clear to all of you, sir, madam? Am I visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, yes, okay. sir. May I, may I continue? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Now the theme of my presentation is work life balance something about me am i now working as an academic director of shivraj college gadinglas district palapur which is affiliated to shivaji university the most of the teachers are working on professional education that is bba bca bcs that's why they are also very much interested in work life balance theme why it is important for these people or young generation teacher teaching faculty they are mostly working on non grant basis there is a do no they are competent expectations are more they are ready to join in future grantable colleges they are taking much efforts for their career result oriented faculty is there hence there is a need to keep work life balance healthy and accept the challenges and be success in your career that's why i have selected this topic for this young teachers my presentation will be on this skeleton i will introduce in detail what is the importance or what is the meaning of why there is need of work life balance i will clear the concepts regarding work life balance i will explain the characteristics of work life balance what are the important characteristics of work life balance what is what are the importance of work life balance in day to day life how to achieve work life balance i will provide you five steps to develop work life balance healthy effective work life balance i will provide seven tips for you how it is to be make unhealthy to healthy work life balance what is mean by unhealthy work life balance what are the features of unhealthy work life balance how to improve work life balance work life balance among college teachers and then i have taken survey of 20 teachers belonging to non grant college they are also interested and that's why a real with the help of structured questionnaire i have collected information i will present in the last session last area of my presentation next there is a lot of challenges in life while keeping balance among professional career and family responsibilities every person is more and more ambitious and trying to take more and more responsibilities in professional life it may be for minor or monetary benefits or positions or promotions or any other achievements but it may create family issues due to not giving sufficient time to family friends relatives it requires work life balance healthy work life balance refers to maintaining a harmonious relationship between your professional work and personal life it requires 
proper time management there should be equal importance for professional career and family responsibilities both area of life are equally important for employee as well as employer to create supportive environment in office and in family balanced employee feel more motivated less stressed out at work and reduce the number of conflicts among co employee and management and to the other hand happy with family next my presentation will is with these following objectives to understand the meaning of work life balance and related concepts to study the healthy way of work life balance to find out obstacles in healthy work life balance and to provide proper way to ideal and healthy work life balance with this hypothesis i will present myself regarding work life balance the work life balance provides the first hypothesis the effect of work life balance on job satisfaction depends on employee's characteristics and condition which include how much importance they give to their health or family relations it may it means employee that is person is important behavior is depend upon his nature of work work life balance is the balance between your personal and professional life which manage stress and keep healthy family relations and third one unbalanced work life balance are a work life are at higher risk of heart disease mental health disorders anxiety and depression hence person should be careful for his life job is a passion need of life but family is important because we are doing all for our family i will clear the important concepts regarding work life balance the first come concept that is work life balance means work life balance involves the minimization of work related stress and uh, the establishing of a stable and sustainable way to work while maintaining health and general well being do not overwork which will harmful to your heart health second concept healthy work life balance a healthy work life balance is the ability to manage professional work and personal life in a way that is sustainable and enjoyable you must be happy with all areas that is professional area and your family third concept that is poor work life balance a poor work life balance is when someone does not equally prioritize their career and personal life and here person is forgetting his or her own health happiness and family next work from home recently it is very important during pandemic condition work from uh, work from hope is a slack term that describes when someone works from home instead of an office can be full time or convenient for employee it can help employees achieve a work life balance and help companies get work done next and last family relations in work life balance family relations include happy and healthy relations with life partner children parents friends relatives etc we love all and doing all the of them but sometimes we forget it and imbalance happen and then problem creates no what are the characteristics of healthy work life balance healthy work life balance refers to maintaining harmonious relationship between your work and personal life that is family life it involves consciously managing your time 
and energy to meet both professional and personal commitments. Following are the some characteristics. Number one, setting boundaries. You know very well that there should be there should not be any specific formula or any boundaries which define or which separate work from office and work from family or family time for family. But in all, it should be necessary to set boundaries between work and personal life. Specific hours should be fixed for your office work and then to personal life. Second one, that is time management, which allocate enough time for work responsibility as well as personal pursuits, such as family, hobbies, habits, etc. Third one, that is stress management. Imp implementing st strategies to manage stress, such as regular physical activity, break and unplugging from work-related activities. You should enjoy your music, tour, family, get together, etc. for getting relief from stress. Flexibility, flexible work arrangements, adopt and adjust your schedule to accommodate unforeseen circumstances or personal needs without jeopardizing work commitments. Then positive work environment. It provides positive work environment, which will be helpful to co-employees and your family members also. Empowering leadership, the healthy work-life balance should provide you leadership qualities among your personality. Then healthy lifestyle includes regular exercise, swimming, running, meditation. And last one, that is meaningful work. It teaches us do the meaningful and useful work and efficient and enjoyable work culture. Some other characteristics, number one, that is dead, deadlines time for friends and hobbies. Most of the time we are spending in office or our professional life and now it is necessary to spare some time with your friends and you must have give justice to your hobbies just like sports, swinging, swinging, drawing, etc. Sleep properly and eat well. Most of the people are not giving proper weightage to this category. And that's why I'm here saying that if you are taking healthy, if you are taking sleep, deep sleep for six to eight hours and you enjoy food with taste, it will be helpful for your health as well as your mind and that will develop your work culture and work, you can keep work-life balance. Not worrying about work when you are at home. Here also, we must separate, segregate our office work from our day-to-day -day family responsibilities. And last one that is more productive and efficient. The things are doing with concentration, no worries, no family tension. Do your office work efficiently. In short, you are successful person in office and happy person in family, friends and relatives. What is the importance of work-life balance? Number one, that is improved mental health. Work-life balance reduces stress and burnout. So mentally, you are tension-free. You can take proper decisions. You can work more and more. And that's why mental health improves your work-life balance. Improved physical health also. Healthy mind helps to improve physical health proper weight, controlled BP, sugar, then you are always fresh for at least four hours for official work. Number three, productivity. It increases your healthy work-life balance, increases efficiency, good thinking, more results for your office work. On the other hand, number four, relationship they improved. Healthy work-life balance enjoys all family functions. 
attend all activities with friends and relatives. Good family couple in friends and relatives. And on the other hand, in office, improved workplace moral and high heightened loyalty to your job. Next, number five, job satisfaction. Healthy work-life balance improves expertise, efficiency, and productivity, which increases your image and which helps to get job satisfaction. You enjoy your job. And number six, more happiness. All is well in office as well as personal life. It increases your happiness. Number seven, flexible work schedule. Healthy work-life balance creates activities, activeness, efficiency. So you can reschedule as you as per requirement of office as well as family need. Then establish the boundaries. In healthy work-life balance, you fix time, responsibilities, attention to your office duties, and then to family. No mix-up in office and family time attend. So there should be uh, there should be boundaries in office and family life. Then nine, learn to prioritize. Healthy work-life balance provides proper time to priority work, no disturbance in mixing or forgetting your both responsibilities. Then more creativity, healthy work-life balance, develop your creativity, thinking, innovativeness, and it will support from co-employees also, family helps to your, all support your activities. That is why more creativity is there. Next to them, fewer burnouts, healthy work-life balance, maintaining health and reduces mental, physical and emotional exhaustion. Healthy work-life balance reduces stress also and reduce regular, flexible, creative and productive work and it increases your personality as a good person in office as well as efficient person in office as well as in office uh, family also. Some, are the, some of the other benefits which are useful for uh, this work-life balance, which a better time management, you can use your time, though it is available to all 24 hours, but proper allocation of time for office as well as to your family, keeping happy to all. Then increase the motivation to achieve goal. Uh, due to healthy work-life balance, performance increases. Providing proper attention, creative utilization of your resources, which achieves goals, it means you are successful in your work and as well as your family relations. Then reduce the sickness and absenteeism. Re a healthy work-life balance keeps regular diet, exercise, meditation, sleep, attending family activities always, and that's why. You are perfect in work and that there is no any problem regarding sickness or absenteeism. Being more present in moment, you are finishing your responsibilities in time everywhere and attending every moment of office as well as family activities. Heighten focus and attentiveness, healthy work-life balance increase, focuses on office and keep attendance for responsibilities, then you are famous in your both areas. Boosted engagement in work, always engage in office work as well as family activities, which boost your personality. You are maintaining both relations. Now, I am providing five steps for achieving work-life balance. The first step that is prioritize what truly mean matters. Second step, set boundaries and stick to them. Third step, embark the art of time blocking. Fourth one, disconnect to reconnect. And fifth one, practice mindfulness and gratitude. 
in detail how the first step will be complete. Prioritize what truly matters. Accept you are different from others. Life is offering an abundance of choices and opportunities. Your time and energy should be for most significant matters. Then make conscious efforts to place them in front of and center. With this, number one, reflects on your values and passions. As per your life, <laughs> values and passions are very important. Select which will fill you and allow you spending quality time with family or pursuing creative hobbies or making a difference in your community or excelling in your career. Then identify the key passions that re resonate your heart. Second stage of first step, identify your long-term goals. Remember, in the next few years, what milestones and achievements do you want to uh, reach? Then you allocate your resources wisely and focus on actions that align with your desired destination. And last one, last stage for first step, that is embrace the 80-20 rule, Pareto principle. Roughly 80% of results confirm, come from 20% of efforts. And hence, focus your energy on these high-value activities. This is the first step. Then second step for creating your work-life balance, that is set boundaries and stick to them. Set boundaries to maintain harmony between work and personal life. It includes first stage, that is define your limits. It could be the number of hours, the time you need for relaxation, or the moments you want to spend with family. So set your career clear and realistic boundaries. Second stage, create physical workspace. Designate, designate a dedicated physical workspace for work-related tasks. Then your mindset is working, which signals to others that you are in work mode. Then when you step away from that space, it signifies that the end of work, work day and allow you to mentally trans, uh, transit to your personal life. Third stage, learn to say yes to yourself, saying no to others. Provide self-care uh, self and personal time without feeling guilty. Remember, taking care of your well-being is essential for increasing productivity. This is the end of st second stage. Now the third stage, embrace the art of time blocking. This technique will transfer chaotic schedule into well-organized and a purposeful day routine. It, it, there is a first stage of this stage, uh, third stage. Get your time blocking tools ready. A physical planner, a digital calendar, or time management apps can be your faithful companions choose a suitable work for you. Second stage, start with the big rocks. Start by blocking non-negotiable tasks that align with your priorities and values. Whether it's family time, personal development, or focused work hours, give prominence to that work. And third stage, that is schedule break and rest short break throughout your day to stretch walk or to take breath give special time for quality rest then third uh, fourth step that is disconnect to reconnect step away from digital noise time to time and spare time to reconnect with yourself for this step 
there are first the first stage is unplug from technology power down your device and step away from screens and liber liberate yourself from constant virtual chapter you will be free for to join your family second stage that is engage in mindful activities like meditation yoga simply taking peaceful walk in nature enjoy and do for you and your family relaxation and third stage connect with loved one with child old age people nurturing your relationships with others spend quality time with family and relatives engage in face to face conversations and share experiences and last step practice mindfulness and gratitude step into the realm of mindfulness and gratitude where you will unlock the true essence of work life balance stage 1 embrace the presence moment when you engage in activities like eating talking to love one give it your undivided attention forget past worries live in present moment second state practice mindful breathing breathing deep breathing inhales and slow and exhales you will cultivate a sense of calm and clarity which will fresh your mind and third stage mindful eating slow down during meals pay attention to flavors food is not just nourishment it's an opportunity to engage your sense and relish the experience slow down during meals pay attention to the flavors and textures and savor each bite effective work life balance for efficient work they are remember with healthy work life balance you will do effective and efficient work and for that purpose it will give you high productivity it is the highly productive using your resources optimally it provides more than your expectations second one doing their best work you use creativity and do the work in best way and increases your image in overall your both areas that is office and as well as your family fourth one that is engaging in meaningful high impact work that moves to go forward increase your image and effective uh, attention towards the work fifth one that is getting buy in for their ideas valuable ideas creator is your image and it is very important for your personality then sixth achieving a healthy work life balance and well being develop your relations with office co employees as well as your friends and well wishers seventh one earning more money and moving up in the company's hierarchy if work life balance is efficient and healthy then you are smart active innovative and then increase your personality position hierarchy and that affects your total life now seven tips are given here for more effective work life balance due to effective efficient work life balance number one the be productive instead of busy remember your work should be productive not keeping busy time for effic- effective work life balance you should be more productive using time effectively productively and getting work done smartly second tip multi task on autopilot smart work life balance helps to take opportunities re- regarding multi task on autopilot number 3 if you cannot stop procrastinating use it to your benefit instead of act delaying or uh, you start your day with the hardest task then it is more effective 
Fourth one, use effective time management technique. Remember, there are 24 hours to all of you, all of us. Eight hours should be for eight to 10 hours for you for your office or college work. Eight to 10 hours for family or relative friends. And six to seven hours to rest, calm, sleep, which is, which is very useful for your total healthy life. Then fifth one, learn how to say no to unnecessary meetings. Save your productive time. Use it to your performance, family activities. Sixth one, cultivate your executive presence. Attend everywhere with your family. And seventh one, tool, tools to help you be more effective at work. Smart, look, effective, talk, discussion. It increases your impression. These are the seven tips for being a good or more effective work-life balance. Another way of effective life, uh, work-life balance. So um, here, what employer can do, he can, number one, flexible work arrangement. Allow employees to work when it is best for them. Second, setting boundaries. Employees to manage their time so they can get their work done on schedule with uninterrupted vacation time. Number three, leading by example. Manager can manage or manager can place example by demo demonstrating personal priorities that are differ from work responsibilities. Fourth one, promoting hobbies, which will reduce stress and more relaxed. Such hobbies should be singing, dancing, cooking, etc. Fifth one, exercising. Give regular exercise which will reduce your stress, improve your focus, focus and increase overall well-being. Sixth one, prioritizing your health. Do all but prioritizing your health, which requires calm sleep, good diet, exercise, meditation, pranayam, good company, etc., etc. Addition, additional efforts by management, which will be helpful to employees and they can uh, make their work-life balance healthy. Number one, providing care for depending, dependent family members. Annual get together to all family members of our staff. Celebration of festival, family competition, asking caring family members. This is possible for employ employers. Uh, healthy, making healthy and uh, uh, attachment to our office work. Second one, that is employee friendly absence or vacation policy. Ask them take rest policy of friendly absence, design vacation policy by arranging family tour, etc. Number three, imparting education or training. Provide induction training, educate skill development, life skills, happy life, etc. Promoting fitness and healthy living, providing gym facility, physical checkup, camp, light music in restroom are beautiful, uh, providing beautiful environment to office. Fifth one, creating fun committees like Hasha club, mimicry, singing, dancing clubs, etc. Now, what is the meaning of unhealthy work-life balance? Unhealthy work-life balance occurs when work becomes overwhelming and takes Precedence over personal life, leading to negative consequences of, of an individual's well-being. Some of the features of unhealthy work-life balance. Number one, constant overwork. Regularly working long hours, including weekends and holidays without sufficient time for rest, relaxation or personal activities. Number two, neglecting personal life, sacrificing personal relationship, hobbies, and leisure activities due to excessive work demands. Third one, burnout, experiencing physical, mental, and emotional exhaustion due to chronic stress and work-related pressure. Fourth one, lack of self-care, failing to prioritize self-care activities such as exercise, adequate sleep, 
and leisure time resulting in deteriorating physical and mental health. Fifth one, strained relationship. Experiencing difficulties in maintaining healthy, relaxed relationship with family, friendly uh, friends and loved ones due to work-related commitments. Effects of one unhealthy work-life balance. Healthy work-life balance may vary from person to person, depending on circumstances and references. Hence, these are the signs of un uh, imbalance of work-life. Number one, that no getting enough sleep. Due to overworking in office or tensions of office, you are not getting proper or enough sleep. Number two, feeling fatigue all times. Take steps to cut back on work and relax, hence always feeling fatigued. Third one, that is missing out on family events due to some urgent work commitment, you miss out family events. That's why that is unhealthy work life balance. Fourth one, that is working on holidays due to overwork, office work, you are not enjoying holidays also. Fifth one, ignoring health, no time for your health checkup or delaying checkup due to overwork. It will be very serious problem. Sometimes it is dangerous for your health. Eight characteristics of work life, health, unhealthy work life balance. Thinking about work forever. Everywhere you are thinking only. Number two, suffering of relations. Due to heavy work, you may not easily irritate with co-workers and keep distance with loved ones. Third one, no focus on work, always feel off. You have unexplained aches and pains. So you may re re rarely have energy to focus at work. For uninteresting and unimportant, everything is uninteresting for you. You often turn down invitations. You are living, isolating yourself from your friends, relatives, family members. Fifth one, more expenses on personal tasks. You spend a lot of money outsourcing support for personal tasks. You are hungry dishes and mail picker will up, uh, pile up and waiting for many days. Sixth one, struggle to take time off. When you are sick, mentally strained, or when you need to take off personal tasks. Forget your choice or linking. You cannot image, imagine doing what you do for the rest or of your life. And always feel like no matters what you are doing you should be doing something else. It will then lead to an existential crisis. How to improve your work-life balance, which is unhealthy? Good work-life balance involves the minimization of work-related stress and establishing sustainable, stable and sustainable way to work with maintaining health and general well-being. Number one, Manage your workload by reducing pressure. You try to manage your workload and avoid pressure to work an unreasonable amount. Second one, encourage vacation time for recharge and return to work by offering paid time off, vacation days and personal days. Take time off or reveal stress. To reveal stress, to avoid workload, work-related stress and burnouts, take time off. Fourth one, take regular holidays compulsory. Keep job satisfaction every Sunday. Will make you fresh for next week work. Decreased stress level and improved morale. Fifth one, that is train managers to look after overwork. You use train managers to look after for problems such as burnout and overload. And sixth one, that is healthy for work environment provides 
ethical decision making and increase job performance. Then next seventh one, encourage holidays to time off. Ask your employees to take holidays for time off from work and fresh for next. Sixth one, that eighth one, that is recognize that each employee is different. Remember that offer them flexible work schedule and hybrid working as per their convenience. Seventh one, focus on productivity, not on hours work, long hour work. If anyone is finishing your work before time, then relieve them time for their family work. Then uh, insist on break allow, breaks allow free time to enjoy their hobbies. Support parents, keep special support to employees and their parents as a family. Offer useful benefits like tours, travels, holiday package for changing work environment. Priority to employee well-being. Always give priority to employees well-being, health and family. Now, the work-life balance among the stickers. The high quality of work-life balance is essential for all educational institutions to continue to attract and retain teachers for a long tenure, which will ensure the growth of any educational institution. Work-life ba of balance of college teacher is a state of equilibrium where the demand of both college work and their personal life are equal. What are the importance of work-life balance to college people? Good physical and mental health will be there. Job satisfaction will be there. Better student learning where highest and meritorious students and many more efforts taken for development of students' career. Attracting and uh, retaining teachers, institution will, educational institution by paying and providing work-life balance, qualified and expert teachers will appoint and then stay permanently. Improved student behavior, ideal scholar, supportive, all round the skilled, all round skills, uh, skilled under uh, students. And by this way, they are good students or ideal students. And sixth, that is manage stress, reduce risk of chronic health disease. Teachers can, you know, sh should be with the help of work-life balance, healthy work-life balance. They will reduce teachers' risk of chronic health disease and they become healthy. Work-life balance of college, how can they maintain regular exercise by maintaining regular exercise, relaxation techniques, pursuing hobbies like singing, painting, drawing, cooking, spending quality time with loved ones, children, parents, etc. Practicing mindfulness, meditation, yoga, pranayam. Say no for extra projects and spend time with your family. Develop your colleagues and co-staff. It is process to develop all your friends, co-staff. How can teacher maintain work-life balance? Respect your time. A teacher should be tend to be hard worker and they should give importance to your time. Then recognize that you are having an impact. Teacher is respected person in society. He must keep good relation with society and hence he should give the importance to his time. Shut up the electronics, mobile computer, spare time with family, friends and society. Know when to say no. For healthy work-life balance, teacher must say no for extra work which will suffer. Extra work which will suffer. Regular exercise meditation will keep your mental and physical health. I told you to take your lecture. Madam, you don't take here. Kavita, lecture is here. Excuse me, Kavita, ma'am. Sixth one, that is, do not forget your friends outside of the college. Remember, always make different group of your friends 
which are not connected to your college activities. So they will change your mood also and say, let it go. Always do not be stick up for specific and rigid role. Accept and change your role as the requirement. Say, let us go. Let it go. How teacher can achieve a positive work-life balance? Teaching is a job that requires a lot of mental and physical contribution from the teacher requires multitasking work. He uh, follow work hours, do not work more than mandatory and then keep time for your life. Take breaks, it will relax you. Do not do it all. Don't do every responsibility which are not related to your career. Do not take wor work back home. Do, do not take work back to home. Com uh, complete your college work at college and keep free from uh, free time to your family members and shut off electric electronics, mobile, computer, etc. Now I am giving you a survey of uh, 20 teachers which are working on BBA, BCom, IT, BCA, and they are uh, working in uh, college, which is uh, working on professional education center. And uh, some questions I asked them, and they have given uh, with the help of this uh, uh, available data. Uh, the following uh, material is available for you. Uh, the gender, as per gender, 60 per 30 percent male, 70 percent female teachers were there. Age group of this uh, uh, survey study, uh, 25 percent uh, up to 25 years. That is, most of them are young. Teaching experience up to five years, 40%. That is, they are also recently joined this uh, college activity. By marital status, that is 65% uh, are uh, teachers are married. Religion wise, 85% are Hindu. 60% uh, uh, teachers are having uh, nuclear family system. Then, uh, 75% uh, teachers having a family says up to four person, that is a small family. Then uh, monthly salary is uh, up to nearly 50% uh, uh, teachers are from six, 16,000 to 30,000 salary. And they are uh, happy with the salary uh, in the uh, in residing uh, area or Taluka place. Then any other source of income, some uh, uh, they are working with, after completion of their college work. Uh, agriculture, forty percent. Some of them have a uh, farming work. Then uh, they are investing some share, are working at share market also. Thirty percent teachers, uh, twenty percent teachers working for business professions, and uh, one percent or ten percent academy join for extra work, uh, income. There's post profession. Uh, profession. Uh, 42 uh, life partners of teacher are working in service, 29% agriculture business, 29% in business area. Monthly income of spouse, that is, they are 58% uh, up to 20,000. So most of them are uh, um, doing both, working both of them for their family uh, resources. And uh, their college time, they are all happy with their college time. Then happy to work more than duty hours. Ask them a question, whether you are happy to work more than that of regular work. 90% teachers are ready to work extra work because they uh, think that uh, they are, for their career, career development, teaching is a bad passion, social responsibility, best use of remaining time, happiness, growth, and engage in good work. That's why they are working. They are ready to work more than that of five hours day. But uh, some of them are uh, saying no. Why? Because they are uh, doing their PhD work, research work. Uh, another question we ask: uh, time for family activities. Nearly most of the teachers uh, attending family tour, family functions, family and tradi uh, traditional work, day-to-day -day, uh, help, uh, spending time with old age members, parents, emotional bonding, spending time with children, spending time with friends, relatives, etc. Everywhere they have given proper justice. 
and that's why they are given proper weightage or proper time for family activities so next uh, one question ask uh, any dispute with your spouse relation uh, uh, there are uh, there is no any uh, considerable uh, dispute that is only one person uh, which is quarrel quarreling only no divorce no living separately so that is why this type of any they, uh, in this survey there is no any dispute uh, with your uh, with their family member like or life partners uh, reasons for leaves they have taken uh, most of the uh, leaves are taken for sickness majority uh, uh, staff members have taken leave for sickness and uh, family function they have they have given proper justice for family family is a proper proper time for family functions attending uh, regarding hobbies uh, every person or every teacher has giving a uh, proper time for enjoying their hobbies uh, sports singing painting drawing cooking gardening knitting etc then habits regarding reading writing speaking debate etc they have given most of them are uh, uh, giving and uh, they are enjoying their habits reading habits and speaking habits uh, number next that is addiction only technology addiction is there seven out of uh, 20 person 15% are uh, say yes they have technology addiction that is use of mobile internet no other addiction alcohol gambling tobacco cocaine cigarette writing or heroin uh, academic achievements uh, there are only 15% uh, teaching faculty have enjoyed or uh, achieved some academic uh, performance regarding net set research publication additional degree etc then happiness regarding office work family friends relating hobbies they are given uh, weightage to everywhere but uh, most of them uh, most out of five they have more justice given to friends and the families and so it is very useful for the nature of the teacher who are giving uh, their office work also important and all, as well as friends and families and uh, last one that is do you maintain a work life balance 100% faculty members are say yes they are uh, maintaining their work life balance by supporting from their family members time management and proper uh, planning so 70% of the teaching faculty are female and they are supporting to uh, their family income 40% faculty is up to age of 30 years and they are young 60% faculty is of 30 to 40 years and above 40 age uh, 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 they are now stable their profession 80 percent of teaching uh, faculties are having uh, experience of up to five years only and 20 percent teachers are experienced teachers 35 percent teachers are unmarried some of them are just completed uh, their formal education and 85 percent teachers are belong to hindu religion 60% teachers are having nuclear family culture. 75% teachers are teachers are having small family. 65% uh, teachers are getting salary up to 30,000. But 35% teachers are not happy with their salary up to 15,000. Nine, that is 50% uh, teaching faculty is having second income source. They are not depend upon salary, upon sal teaching salary. 42% teachers was our service profession 29% agriculture and 29% are business as a profession and 58% teachers spouse income up to uh, 20,000 42% teachers spouse income is about 30,000 they only having some income stability well on and all teachers are happy with their college time 90% teachers are happy to work more than that of their duties. It may be for their career development, enjoying teaching work and uh, best use of their time. They are eagerly waiting for grand table course. Majority teachers are very time, uh, sparing time with all family activities. 
some teachers are not spending time for family to old age members day to day help etc no dispute with their spouse family relations sickness and family function are the main reason of you 75% teachers have tracking hobbies and reading and uh, sparkling habits are more common to teachers and 75% teachers have technology addiction only 15% teachers are achieved acam- academic improvement and 12% teachers are uh, and teachers are more happy with family friends and relatives as compared to office work and hobbies and 100% teachers are maintaining work life balance with their family support time management and proper planning thank you if in, any questions please ask thank, thank you, you sir okay. any questions from participant side Yes, anyone? So can I move further? Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, what an uplifting and productive day uh, it has been. We have learned and motivated so much uh, for both these sessions. Sir. Thank you everyone for joining this session. Uh, before concluding, uh, I would I would like to request all the participants who have registered but not paid uh, to do so the earliest. So and also fill out the feedback form daily to get your certificates. Uh, with your kind permission, uh, can I go ahead for a formal vote of thanks, sir? Okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh, good evening, everyone. I, Assistant Professor Sarah Bano Sheikh. Uh, take it as a privilege to propose a vote of thanks on behalf of MCA and Achievers College of Commerce and Management at day three of five days national level FDP. Firstly, I would like to thank our patrons, uh, President of MCA, Dr. B.B. Taiwari, sir, and Executive President of MCA, T.A. Shivare, sir. I also would like to express my hearty appreciation to all the members of Advisor Committee, FDP, Chairperson, Dr. Valmalik Sharwari, sir. Convener, Principal, Dr. G. V. Shitole, sir. Deputy Convener, Senior Professor, Dr. A. M. Gaurav, sir. Co-Convener, Dr. Arvind Chaudhary, sir. FDP Director and Principal of Achievers College, Honorable Dr. C. A. Mahesh Devandika, sir. Both the Secretaries of FD, FDP, Dr. Nishakan Jha, sir. And uh, Ms. Sophia D'Souza, madam, Vice Principal of Department of Management Studies. Vice Principal of Department of Commerce, Ms. Sana Khan, Madam. I am extremely uh, grateful to our today's resource person, Dr. Ram Chandra Nilpankal, sir, for your time and for sharing your expertise with us on topic of work-life balance, sir. Uh, it is not only improve our mental health, but it is benefit our institute too. Uh, we hope have the opportunity to uh, hear from uh, again in the future. I also would like to acknowledge the efforts of organizing committee. Lastly, I would like all the participants for the active participation. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Madam.